Today's video was selected for you by my gorgeous patrons, so thank you very much to them for making this selection. And if you would like to be involved in future video polls and also have access to the Discord, the one card riff video every month and other privileges as well, check out the tiers. I will leave all the information down below. I'm gonna record some ambience and put it in this track. <laughs> Hello there darling dandelions, thank you so much for joining me today to deep dive into poppet usage in magic. I personally love using poppets in my witchcraft, I think that they are a very versatile tool, really inspirational and there is a really big place for poppet usage in my heart when it comes to witchcraft. So I would like to give you as much inspiration as possible and posit some ideas to you for things that you could use poppets for in your magical workings. If you are not a witch, I can say say that poppet usage is something that is incredible regardless of whether or not you would use a poppet in a witchy context. I think poppets are just really good for wellness, self-love, shadow work. I think they're really good for creativity. Um, they're, they're just really a very versatile tool. So if you're not a witch, don't worry. This is uh, not necessarily something that is only, you know, strictly for witches. You can follow along and see if you can get anything from the ideas too. All of the ideas that I put forth in this video can be tweaked. I'm not here to be prescriptive. I'm not here to tell you what to do. Um, and the other thing I want to mention is that obviously poppets can be used to represent yourself or they can be used to represent somebody else. I am not going to be necessarily teaching techniques for either one of those. I'm just going to be suggesting techniques that you can apply to whatever it is that you are doing. So if you're doing healing work, if you are doing work uh, for the healing or the progression of someone else, if you are doing hexing, banishing, binding, whatever you're using the poppet for, you will be able to find something here that might potentially inspire you and drive you forward. Usually when a poppet is used in magic, we are using that poppet to represent a person. This is not always the case, but for the majority of cases, the poppet is indeed used to represent yourself at your current age or, uh, you know, at a past age, if you're doing like inner child magic, or it's used to represent somebody else, you know, a loved one, um, someone who's uh, behaving badly and you would like to stop them from doing so, whatever the case may be. Um, there are a few different ways that you can bring a poppet into your craft, like different ways of doing it. So I just want to talk about a few of them before we get started on the 10 techniques that I'm going to suggest to you. So if you're not interested in this part, if you already have a poppet, if you already know what you like to use for a poppet, use the timestamps to skip forward. But this is for people that are not actually sure how they could make a poppet or how they could get hold of one. So I want to talk about a few different techniques. So first of all, you will notice that there are three poppets laid out in front of you. The first one is actually a doll. Um, and this is representative of me. And I have used this for magic and ritual related to me. Um, this is a shop bought poppet that I got from a witchcraft store. And this is a poppet that I made myself, that I sewed myself. This is a representation of me as a baby and it is used for various workings to that end. Um, my most common poppet that I used was also made by myself at home, very roughly cut and sewn as you will see here. Um, it's actually pink and again it is a, it's sort of the shape of the human body but I can't show you that one because it's actually wrapped up in a working right now so I don't have that one to hand because it is currently activated and I'm doing something with it. So if you want to use a doll you can you know find them in thrift stores or you know charity shops around you or you can go online and find one that you think is suitable um, as I said you know you can get these from witchcraft stores I think it's really useful if you can make your own um, because you can put different things in it you know inside this one there are lavender heads um, and there is a herb mixture that was made for me I've also got some oil in there I've got some nails some hair um, that kind of thing some blood some saliva and so I think that really sort of, uh, if you're using a poppet to represent yourself, that can be really helpful. If you're using it to represent someone else and you know that's all you're using it for, then you might want to put some of their hair in it if you can or something else. Um, so all of these are good possibilities. Another thing I wanted to mention, though, is that if you're not sure whether or not you want to use a poppet um, or you just want to experiment with it, there is actually nothing wrong with using your bog standard piece of paper drawing of the rough shape of a human body on it and then going ahead and using that. <laughs>
voila, there we go. Nice and sweet and simple. Uh, the really good thing about using just a bog standard paper cutout poppet is that it can be single use. So if you are not keen on the idea of having a poppet that you use multiple times and that you kind of cleanse and rededicate to a specific working, you can just use a paper poppet and then you can burn it in the cauldron or do what you want with it, put it in the recycling. Um, and then, you know, when it's done, it's done basically. So that's a, a really good reason to go with the single use paper poppet. Another technique that I really like to use when working with poppets is actually just to make one out of bread. Um, you can just buy like a loaf like this. I bought this one because it's particularly soft inside and I just scooped out some bread and very quickly made a rough mock-up of what kind of thing I would use. Um, this is a very, very useful way to make a poppet. You can do it with dough as well or just anything that is edible and kind of like uh, pliable, you know? Um, so this can be a really good thing. Uh, when it comes to actually what you would do with the poppet, you know, you can put it into food recycling afterwards if you want to, but I actually really enjoy to eat it. And there are various things that I do with it that, um, you know, make it even more of a delicious thing to consume after I have done my magical working. Um, I don't worry about consuming it because to me, like, if it's representative of another person, um, then it's consuming them could be considered as an act of taking them to my heart, but also could be considered an act of um, destroying, stopping, uh, or otherwise having power over them, depending on what it is that you're doing, you know? Um, and if it represents me, then it makes every bit of sense to eat it you know I'm just taking it back to myself I'm accepting it as a part of myself just to mention really quickly a few things that you can do with an edible poppet that make it particularly useful are that you can draw on an edible poppet you can use these little icing pens that I find really useful and you can put you know sigils on the poppet using the icing pen you can put um, lettering on there so you know that kind of uh, is makes it into an, an interesting pop it experience there we go popped a little k on there just to show you what's possible um, you also can create sort of like your ring of protection around the poppet using something like golden syrup that's what i choose to use when i'm using uh this kind of um this kind of uh poppet magic you know I, I like to use my little ring of golden syrup there um you also can sprinkle things on there that are edible um, that can represent certain things. So you might want to use hundreds and thousands, uh, in other words, like colourful sprinkles to represent something. Um, and you also can use really interesting things that you find, like these are edible eyes, for example, uh, that I found in the shop. So, you know, it can be really interesting and cool to make uh, an edible poppet. So I guess I'm just kind of putting that out there as an idea. Um, and the other way to do it if you don't want to kind of shape your poppet with bread is uh, just use tortillas um, and just draw out what you want and then cut it out and again you have yourself there an edible poppet. If anybody's wondering yes I do condone cheating and just working with a gingerbread man of course <laughs> of course I condone that like get chaotic about it and just grab yourself a gingerbread man it's all good. So the first thing that you might want to try doing with your poppet is to wrap and unwrap it. Um, the symbolism around wrapping and unwrapping can mean a few different things. Obviously you can wrap for protection, for shielding, so the cloth that you use or the paper that you use, whatever it might be, to wrap your poppet would be representative of that sort of energy of shielding, that power of protection, uh, that defence against whatever is attacking, whatever the attacking force is. Uh, wrapping can also represent hiding from something or someone, so being safe from an attacking force or an unpleasant thing or a difficult whatever it might be, um, through wrapping. So the, the sort of item you're wrapping your doll in can be representative of that ability to hide, that ability to escape, that ability to be safe. You can also choose to see wrapping as a form of securing a certain energy or intention within. So for example, if you do work with your poppet that represents that you are feeding the poppet with something, you are gifting the poppet with something, maybe you're showering it with love, you are in investing a lot of creative energy in it, you are... Um, enhancing it uh, and therefore whoever it represents in some way you might afterwards want to wrap the poppet up in order to secure that energy within to keep it you know with the poppet essentially 
You also can use wrapping as a, a symbol of the chrysalis. So if you want to represent that the poppet needs to go into a period of gestation, a waiting period, um, a state of calm, then you can use the, the wrap to uh, create that chrysalis energy. In fact, this one actually looks very chrysalis-like. And unwrapping can represent a whole host of things as well. You can show, uh, you can use the wrapping, for example, as a representation of um, the comfort zone. And then when you unwrap the poppet, uh, you can choose to see that as, you know, escape from the comfort zone, you know. So really coming into independence, coming into sovereignty, taking risks, being bold. And as you gently unwrap, it's like you are releasing the poppet into that power, that new adventure, that excitement, that fresh start. So there are so many other different ways that you can use wrapping and unwrapping as well. These are just a few little examples. And of course, you can leave a poppet wrapped for quite some time. I actually like to leave a wrapped poppet on my altar or place the poppet into a box, which to me is another form of wrapping. And then actually sort of ceremonially have the coming out of the poppet at the time when it is appropriate for that to happen. Another tip that I want to suggest is taking care of your poppet. Uh, this is a poppet that I have taken care of quite a lot. I tend to use it to represent the very youngest version of myself and I enjoy giving the poppet praise and reassurance. I like rocking it in my arms. I hold it when I'm watching a film or lying in bed. I went through a major phase of doing this when I first made the poppet a few years ago. Um, super useful to do. Uh, if you can comb your poppet's hair, if your poppet has hair, you can give it loving words. Um, even as you walk past it, you don't even have to be um, directly interacting with it or doing a working with it. You can just, um, you know, top it up daily with nice words, reassurance, praise, love. And don't forget the poppet could represent just as easily someone else. It doesn't have to represent you. Um, you might have poppets, for example, to represent all of your children. Um, you know, you might have poppets to represent your partner, your best friends, etc. You might activate a poppet to represent somebody in your life who is really sorely in need of love, strength, praise, reassurance. And you want to make sure that you are really sort of like adding value to the love you're already giving to them by making sure that you are dosing that poppet up with love, you know, on a regular basis. So definitely take care of the poppet, um, praise it, shower love upon it, make sure that you are showing it a good time, um, being sweet and helpful towards it. And that the idea is that that energy and that intention extends to the person that that poppet represents. A really interesting thing to do with your poppet and a really fun thing is to give it clothes and accessories. And if you want to, you can regularly change out its clothes and accessories. You can give it jewellery, you can give it toys, you can give it things that actually belong to it. So when you're working with a poppet long term, that can be a really interesting thing to do. Uh, with this particular poppet that I haven't had very long that I've been working with, I am planning to make her a snakeskin dress. I do have some real snakeskin, which I obtained from my friend's snake. <laughs> the snake willingly obliged, okay? It didn't need the skin anymore. Um, but snakeskin, as you can imagine, is a very potent, potent tool in witchcraft. So it's a great privilege to be able to work with snakeskin. And I'm definitely going to be fashioning something for this poppet out of snakeskin to represent rebirth, change, transformation, and the potency therein. So that's definitely happening. A few different things that you can consider if you want to um, give your poppet accessories would be, you know, give it a crystal that is its power crystal. Um, give it a toy that it represents, you know, that's something that the poppet uses um, that, that gives the poppet comfort or joy. And therefore, by extension, you are giving the person that the poppet represents that comfort or joy. That's always what it's about. Um, give your poppet its own uh, spirit guides um, or guardian angels, you know, um, little beings that the poppet speaks to. Um, give your poppet a pet. I'm going to go with pet butterflies for this example. Um, you even could give your poppet some teeny tiny cat tarot cards. Um, I have a friend that gave these to me. I don't know where he found them, but they look like a set of tarot cards and I'm going with it. So you can definitely have fun with this. You can be super creative with your accessories and, and clothing. You can change the poppet's clothing. You can make clothing for the poppet. In fact, um, with this little guy that we made earlier for the example, I can definitely see myself making some old school paper doll clothing for a poppet like this. My mum used to make us paper dolls from cardboard when we were young and make all the outfits for them. Um, and that was just such a joy. I actually find dolls to be incredibly spiritual. Um, I work with doll parts and I work with full dolls. And when I was younger, I'm sure that some of the earliest magic that I did was with dolls. Um, I know that it was. 
was, even when I didn't know that I was doing magic at those moments, I was doing magic when I was changing the clothing, when I was talking to the dolls, when I was taking them on adventures with me. I look back now and see that that was very magical. And I actually even have a doll head on my arm. I've just pulled my dress up to show you so it looks a little tight here. But yeah, I have a doll's head on my arm with lilies growing out of the head. So um, yeah, doll parts for me and doll clothing and accessories that's all really exciting for me so you can imagine that this particular technique works really well for me you can actually permanently change the look of your doll um, so you can give it tattoos if you want to you can give it a haircut that kind of thing you can sew things onto it you can glue jewels onto it um, you know you can do all kinds of stuff like that to permanently change its appearance and therefore represent that there has been some shift some alchemy some irreversible change in the life of whoever the poppet is representing or indeed that you want there to be you know so giving your poppet a tattoo for example that represents something that you want to have happen in your reality is very potent because it's a commitment that makes a permanent change to the poppet and therefore represents the permanent change that you're going after in your life it's also just really symbolic to do something like cutting a poppet's hair or um you know, just writing on the poppet, doing something permanent that you cannot get rid of, that changes the look of the poppet. It shows commitment and dedication to whatever it is that you want to bring in next. One really cool thing that I like doing with my poppets sometimes is I do like to give them little sound baths. Um, you can sing to your poppet, you can chant, you can chant to your poppet, you can play it music, that kind of thing. Uh, you might want to use chimes uh, and play your chimes to your poppet if you want to if you have other instruments if you have rattles um if like me you uh work with a drum then you can use those kinds of things too depending on what your purpose is for using sound what you are trying to achieve from the working um so it's really up to you you know you would decide how you would want to use sound and, and what that would look like and and what kind of uh, result you would want to achieve from that okay so far we have had wrap and unwrap the poppet was number one um take care of it was number two change its clothes and accessories was the third tip um give it a sound bath the fifth tip that I want to mention, and this is something that I have also done for a long time with my poppets, is I season them, okay? Don't be afraid to season your po your poppet like a fucking chicken, all right? Put oil on it, scatter and rub herbs into it. You can put crystals on it. Um, you can leave it for a while to let those intentions um, and those various scents um, sort of really soak in and do their work. Uh, you can spray your poppet with perfume. Uh, that represents certain things you know you can get a pipette bottle make an oil mix and actually sort of direct the oil mix depending on what you're trying to do with the poppet and where you're trying to um, you know send your energy and intention um, so this is a, a really great thing to do um, let me just see if I can grab something quickly give you a quick demo here we go so here I have a bag of Dictamnus, Dittany of Crete, very, very powerful, has various uses, and don't be afraid to just, yeah, scatter some on. Like I said, season it like a chicken, don't be afraid, go for it. So, number six for a technique that you can use with your poppets, um, your mileage might vary on this one, but one thing that I really love to do is use a poppet as a divination tool. So, once I've established like who the poppet is, is it me, is it somebody else, I can actually ask the poppet a question and then do something with the poppet to determine the answer to the question. Um, if you like using yes or no questions in divination, this could be particularly cool for you. Um, I would use a poppet like this. So I wouldn't use a doll with joints and working components. I would always use something, um, you know, sort of cheerfully simplistic like this. Let's say I want to ask a yes or no question. So maybe I'm asking my unconscious mind, do I really want this or not? Um, uh, do I really want this, right? And then what I would do is I would do best of three or best of five and I would drop the poppet. Oh, I've dropped it out of shot. Drop it and let's say it lands on the side with the heart on two of the three times. Then it would be a yes or a no, depending. There we go. That's twice without it, once with. So as long as you have two, heart, two sides to the poppet and one side is different to the other, you actually can use it for a yes or no divination method. You know, you can 
you can should I stay or should I go that shit and see what comes up so that's an interesting one I've used before another way that I kind of think of to be sort of like seasoning is because I'm a collage artist I use a lot of words and images from magazines and that can be a really useful way um, of sort of working with your poppet so if you get some um, some words printed out or cut out you can place the words onto the poppet as part of a ritual or spell. So vibrant colours I've got there. Um, I've got here, it doesn't have to be the end. It's a joy to see that authenticity. You can pin these words on if you want to, or if you're using a single use uh, once only poppet, like a paper poppet, then you can stick the words on. Um, but it actually creates a really interesting sort of feeling of weaving a narrative and you can leave those words there until the things that the words represent have come to pass. Number seven, a thing that you can do with your poppet and something that I really enjoy to do, make it a house or give it a house in your environment. You don't need to make it a house from scratch, um, but you can give it a location where it lives. What is the point in doing this with your poppet? Um, well, the main reason that I would say it's good to do it is because it means something different when the poppet is in its home as opposed to when it is away from home. So we can actually create two different energies, the energy of when the poppet is at home. So maybe that would represent safety, security, understanding what is going on, having all of the available creature comforts around you, protection, maybe it would represent cleansing. And then when you take the poppet away from home, that could represent adventure, it could represent new stuff happening, it could represent change, um, you know, sophistication, new knowledge. Um, you also could make the poppet a home actually to intentionally remove the poppet from the home to represent that you are um, pushing whoever the poppet represents into danger or into unpleasantness. It depends if you are hexing or cursing or whatever. Um, if you are binding you might choose to use the home of the poppet to actually place the poppet back into a neutral position to stop the behaviour that the um, that whoever the poppet represents is engaging in. Sorry, this is getting really fiddly. The language is getting really fiddly. Um, so, what could represent a home? Well, you could just put the poppet under your pillow, put it in a drawer. Um, you could use a box and pop it into the box and the box could represent that, yes, now that poppet is at home. That is the this sort of uh, the place which is the poppet's house, if you will. It's where it resides. And then, as I said, when you want to take the poppet out of the home, the energy changes, the intention changes, what you are doing kind of changes. Um, and you can actually get really, you can get really extra like I do and collect from time to time little homes for poppets. This is one of my favourite ones because that looks like a, um, like a little party ring, you know, those biscuits that you would get at kids parties. And it's my little pony. So um, inside here, I have been known to leave a poppet just doing its thing. Um, so you actually can grab a little home from a, a thrift store, go to the little toy section and see if you can find something that actually resembles a home with actual windows that you can look through. That's always a good time. Okay, for technique number eight that I'm going to suggest, I'm bringing back my messy little single use poppet for this example. Would it actually be a decent video about poppets if I didn't mention, darlings, that you can indeed hurt them? Yes, you can. You can push them to destruction if that's what you want to do. Whether you are doing a hex or a curse or maybe you are doing a banishing um, and so you want to oust the poppet, you want to push it away, you want to get rid of it, you want to dissolve it, whatever it might be. Um, there are reasons why you might want to actually cause damage to the poppet. You might want to deliberately um, cause harm to the thing that you have made or that you are using. You can punch staples in it. You can call it names. You can drop hot wax on it. Um, you know, so these are all things that you might want to consider. You also can do the very obvious thing and you can cut it. Um, you can stab it if you want to. <laughs> stab it in the heart. Um, you also uh, can use pins. The tried and tested old school thing that we do. We use pins. 
um, you know, so don't be afraid if you feel like it's time to uh, take it somewhere with no light and leave it there or tell it off or pin scary shitty words to it or whatever you want to do, um, you know, go ahead and uh, feel free depending on your purpose for using the poppet. I'm not going to get into the ins and outs of my view on hexes and curses, but I did make a video about that quite some time ago and I would say that my opinions are still pretty much the same. I don't personally use malevolent magic, but I would if I felt the need to, for sure. Um, and I do not discriminate against those who do it, but I do talk about my personal reason, reasons for avoiding it in that video. So I'll leave that down below if you want to watch it. I also talk about malevolent magic in my book, Rebel Witch, which you can pick up from a number of different places online. So you will find all the details of how to pick up Rebel Witch down below. One thing that I will say about doing things that are mean to the poppet, you know, like stabbing, pinpricking, um, like I said, leaving it in a dark room, cutting it, saying horrible things to it, etc. One thing I will say about that stuff is that it can actually be very cathartic when it relates to you as well. And I'm not saying that we should be doing self-loathing magic and ritual because you know I'm all about self-love. But sometimes when I'm disappointed in myself, when I feel like I lacked discipline in a certain way or I didn't do what I said I was going to do, I actually find it personally cathartic to tell my poppet off or to do something that represents that I don't think I was acting as the best version of myself and I'm unhappy with myself, but I want to deliver discipline to the poppet and then move on from there. The reason that I probably find it useful to do this at times in my magical practice is because I am a recovered self-harmer. And I think we can all agree that it is a lot less destructive to stick a pin in a doll that represents me than it would be to stick a pin into me. So it, it can actually work in terms of doing um, magic and ritual relating to yourself. This is not all about causing harm or exacting vengeance upon another, but it can obviously be for that. And very often it is for that. But I just thought I'd mention that there are other reasons why we might actually be a little bit mean <laughs> to our poppets. You know, maybe you want to adopt a kind of army boot sergeant kind of vibe with your poppet for a while because you yourself feel that you need to pull yourself up on some things that have not been that great. Um, and exacting some kind of punishment and acknowledging some kind of wrongdoing to a poppet can often be healthier than a lot of the other things that, you know, one might have in mind, right? Or that one used to do in the past. So it can be really cathartic on that score as well. It's just kind of like taking yourself to task, owning up to what you've done, going through the cathartic process of recognising why it made you feel bad and you don't want to do it again. Um, and then acknowledging that you will go on to be a better version of yourself, you know? So if you make a single use poppet like this one is, you might actually want to use it to represent the part of you that did or said the thing that you don't think was too crash hot and then actually kind of go through your feelings about that part of you uh, using the poppet. You know, I think this can be incredibly psycho-spiritually valuable if indeed it, if somebody feels moved to do that. I certainly wouldn't recommend it if it doesn't sound good to you, but there are reasons why it might be good to a practitioner to do that. So I wanted to put that out there. Number nine of the 10 tips that I have for things that you can do with your poppet. This is something that I've done a lot, darlings, and it is a very, very potent technique. I think of it as poppet story time. So basically I make my poppet into the main character and I actually take the poppet through a story and I narrate the story as I'm going. This is so powerful. Let me give you an example. So here I've placed the poppet on top of this bed of pins or this bed of nails, if you will. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to go for a kind of eight of swords vibe for anyone who's tarot literate. So I'm looking for a feeling of discomfort, a feeling of stagnation, a feeling of obstacles coming up and difficulties that need to be dealt with. I'm using the pins to represent where the poppet is at the moment, standing somewhere uncomfortable, standing somewhere that they do not want to be. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk the poppet over to these three runes, which are representative of different challenges that the poppet will go through. And as I go over the three runes, I'm going to talk about what each of those challenges is and how it will play out for the poppet and what the poppet will learn as the result of those challenges. Then I've used some of my um, some of my uh, infamous hair um, uh, flowers that I just had to hand because I'm packing them for a festival I'm going to tomorrow. So I've, I'm thinking of this as the gateway to summer. So here I'm representing time in the story. I'm saying that this will happen now, this will happen through the spring, and then in the gateway to summer that the poppet is going to move through, that will represent a definite change from this energy of challenge and obstacles. And we move through 
into the place of power. So representing that as the poppet goes on this onward journey, there will be this moment of transition and this moment of entry into joy. Uh, then I might, you know, go ahead and kind of like put a drop of, of an oil onto the poppet to represent new knowledge, new life, a baptism into the new way of being. Have a think about how you would do some storytelling with a poppet. Um, you can definitely do this in malevolent magic as well as doing it in magic that is about, you know, um, sort of uh, energy, power, love, you know, success. So you can tell a successful story, but you can also use storytelling with a poppet to tell the story of the poppet's downfall. You know, so if you are working with the notion of trying to bring somebody down a peg or two, you might want to start the journey and do it the opposite direction. Even now that I'm thinking about it, it could well be done in the opposite direction. So the poppet begins in this place of power, this place of untouchability. Um, maybe they're a charismatic narcissist with a lot of public support and you kind of want to show that. And then you show that there's this gateway into these challenges and these difficulties and this feeling of discomfort that will come. So you can definitely do it both ways. Okay, the final tip that I have for working with your poppet is travel with your poppet. Take your poppet somewhere else. Take it to see the sights, show it the world take it on an adventure with you especially if that adventure is significant to you emotionally especially if you're going somewhere to heal or to recharge or to learn something whatever it might be you're going to want to take your poppet along for the ride if that is spiritually significant to you and yes I couldn't be asked to go any further than the back roof <laughs> but I've made my point <laughs> and so with that I bid you adieu much love darlings